All right, we're back with sound now. Now with more sound. Awesome. The stream will have sound. Great. <laughs> oh, no. All right. How do you get on the second stream now? Oh. Sorry. Like so red button. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like All right, and we're into round 2 of trying to it's just it's it's freaking out all right and we are getting into the loading screen but we're fixing the names real quick but now we're in game so now we have to press scene five and we have to change these sides so to one to sm our control all right g d w s for team what the fuck is team two where is team one you see oh there it is <laughs> all right and we are underway All right, and okay. All right, let's see what the picks are. All right, we gotta line this up. Do you remember what order you told me to put it in? Uh, top, top jungler mid ADC support. Oh, looks like we got a Yasuo pick going on here for uh, the stud muffins. Welcome to uh, they're gonna try their buy one more time. Hopefully, it works a little bit better this time around. It might go a little bit better. Uh, the the Vi and uh, Yasuo synergy works out pretty well. And uh, for GG, we suck. Look like, looks like they're going for more aggressive jungler instead of the tanky jungler they had last game. Oh, wow. Zareth got chunked down pretty well by uh, Rise in mid. All right, so it looks like top lane, we got Yasuo versus Renekton. Mid lane, we got Ryze versus Zareth. Our, our bot lanes are Morgana and Tristana versus, let's see, Vayne and Janna. And then we got the junglers, Vi, and then Kha'Zix. Again, prepping the jungle for that early game. Not so much positioning on the entrances that they did last time. Um, I don't think... I think they uh, believe that they're not going to invade from the previous matches. They just don't think so. Because um, I know in their strategy, they like to prop up on those. All right. So we do have a rise in the mid versus that Xerath. I kind of thought they were going to lane swap because Yasuo would just get bullied out straight from that rise. But I mean, Yasuo gets bullied by Renekton too, as far as I've seen. All right, and that that clear on the Kha'Zix though. V just finishing up her blue, and Kha'Zix is already on the race. That was a good trade down bot on the Jana. Um, they'll be a little bit behind this time, so she won't be able to zone them out as, as well as earlier. 
Ooh, and that really, really, er really, really early aggression on mid with Rise. That heal being popped. Ooh, good stun, good stun. Let's see if that B will go on that mid, because Rise will take a lot of harass for all the aggression they're pulling. And right now, if they're in a dangerous position on bot as well. Uh, that main is getting split off from the CS. Scared of the snare to come back. Has to miss out quite a, C a bit of CS to come back in the lane. And it looks like first blood will go to Rise. Ignite. Ignite pop. The... Uh, he did an uh, Ignite flash from the prison and he did his uh, Q, which uh, popped the, the low health Zara. And it looks like all that going in for the first gank. Oh! And a miss with the Void Spikes will let that guy live. Yasuo. Yeah, let Yasuo live. <laughs> that guy. All right, looks like V's gonna go up there to cover. A little bit risky, because again, V is not clearing as fast as that Kha'Zix, and as we've seen from last game, the V clear is pretty behind. It, it's, it's very detrimental to the team that she's not able to go out and gank as often. It seems like GG, we suck, are going a little bit more aggressive uh, this time around. They have the, probably had the confidence boost from last game, which is probably very demoralizing for uh, stun muffins here. But hopefully they can uh, pull back and we can see a good game going on. And as we all know, confidence doesn't always mean a good thing. I mean, you get a lot more risky with that. Um, but again, they got that. They have that Tristana and the Mord, uh on bot. That mid game, late game will be pretty solid for him. But right now, uh, I'm a little concerned. But as long as the zoning keeps coming off for that Morgana, I I don't see too many issues on that early game. One miss snare, and that could have been a kill on bot lane, I believe. But that Jana is really hurting for it. CS score is on top, and Renekton being. <laughs> A uh, Renekton bully as usual. And on mid lane, Last Chicken X is giving them all of it. They are not, they're unrelentless on that mid lane. A flash from that V probably saved her life right there. Kha'Zix taking their blue. I think, right? No, no, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> Blue's not up yet. But that was a good hop from the blue bot. Um, got him in a good position. Again, having to pop that flash will be an issue because V Pre-6 doesn't have much going for her without that flash Q. All right, mid lane taking quite a bit of damage because the mid lane did get knocked down as well as the V. Um, I do see mid lane going down before on the other lane, especially after that first blood give. And uh, good pick on that Renekton. Like I said, Renekton or Rise could have went top and shut down him just the same. Uh, but the fact that it's Renekton up there being able to get able to take so much more and just get the stuns off and just destroy. Um, I haven't seen much Renekton play recently in, in the tournament at all, I don't believe. So that was a uh, refreshing. I think stud muffins are trying to bank on the late game Yasuo and Vi combo. They're hoping for like one good team fight. Got a little bit of disengage with Janna too because they know how aggressive uh, GG we suck can be. But what really surprised me was that Xerath pick. I, I'm not seeing anywhere where that was um, was a pick that I would have made. Um, it's just it's really risky considering that they gave all that the uh, ex uh, sorry, all that the Kha'Zix. I mean his escape is a stun, and that is some BM coming from Last Chicken in May. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is. Again, Revlo bullying out that Yasuo from his CS. It looks that the difference is 20 on top in CS. That's quite a big, that's that's gonna hurt a lot. I'm pretty sure that jump that just done it saved her. Uh, pretty sure Vayne was about to confirm her to the wall to finish her. 
Might be some pretty bad news for uh, Renekton here. He might be trying to snipe the kill on the top well. Oh, no. And Renekton down. One, uh, one kill going towards Stud Muffins. Alright, 1k lead on GG. We stuck still, but that kill... Uh, that kill will uh, help out Yasuo quite a bit. Um, you'll still have that innate tankiness of Renekton and the CC to go with it will be an issue. I'm really surprised that Renekton did it back off. I mean, he does have a pink right there after all. He did see him come through, right? He went through the river? I think it was more Zona trying to kill Yasuo and W out of there versus... Or E out of there, the one is just, uh, it's E, yeah. He was probably trying to get the kill get out, but Yasuo was just too mobile with his little dashes. Alright, All right. and again, uh, I, I agree. Uh, either that or just knock him out so he can't get that CS, but because he got knocked out, it it didn't really help him too much. I mean, Yasuo, uh, Yasuo got a kill, and he's going to be able to get a little bit more CS with that zeal now. Oh. Zerath pulling off an ulti, is, I guess to try to steal the blue, didn't act, didn't work. But that Rise is now in a dangerous position. Kazix gonna have to ulti to get in there. I'm not. Oh, well, okay, never mind. He had it all covered by himself. Best tags him a nice blue buff coming from Vi, so he'll be able to sit in lane a little bit longer and harass his ass. Not really looking good for the mid lane for stun muffins here. So they're gonna have to bank on that Yasuo top, but it looks like they're pushing pretty even. Yeah, especially with the Zeros without the heal. I didn't I didn't see him pop it, but I guess it was an uh, earlier death, judging by the time on it. Uh, and Renekton being as as active as can be in that top lane, still keeping that 20 lead even with the death. Um, bot lane, um, the CS score 65 to 60. Real close, real close. Dragon is up. I'm surprised GG We Suck has not made more uh, more um, headway to it. Uh, usually they're on top of those, but again, they are doing pretty well in their lanes. Maybe they just want to make it a kill game. All right. We, we did see that BM come out of last chicken, so maybe they're getting a little bit caught for their own good. And that ult will give V that I think you have the blue buff back, right? Got that blue buff back. The trade complete. All right. Top lane needing some help. Kha'Zix did go up there for a game. And oh, ulti by Yasuo wasn't as much damage as he hoped for, I don't think. But that will keep them off the turret just in case that buy comes on where they are. Top lane does know that they need help. Sorry. There's quite a bit of noise coming from GG. We suck right now. Lots of screaming. Good alts on both of the supports, but uh, the AD carries were on opposite sides during that. How's it coming in for a gank? And oh, that wind wall blocking the void spikes wasn't enough, but that was a really, really nice wind wall. Yeah, he, he looks like he had it, so he was about to walk off and then realize the wind wall blocked it. He's like, oh no, I gotta go back in for that. Again, I'm really surprised they have not gone for dragon. GG Suck has been pretty on top of the dragon games for the past few games. So, um,. Maybe it's the morgue pick that uh, really puts it in a uh, binding or binding <laughs> or or the fact that they're just being a whole lot more aggressive with that Janna. I mean, Janna Vayne is a scary combination. You have that knock up, you have the shield to just tank, head tank some of that damage and the tumble in will just give you that extra boost of damage you might just need. I see that uh, GGB Suck is warding up the jungle just a little bit, just enough to see where that Vi is when they go for that red, and they're they're putting it to good use. All right, getting rid of that <laughs> pink ward. Looks like mid lane is going up for a gank on top again. Yasuo's ult is off cooldown. He is charging up for it. He's getting ready. Revlo did see him this time because he did pick up the pink ward and he got away. Is that the same pink ward that was sitting there for nine times? Yes, yes it was. They, uh, they walked past that. Alright, looks like they're getting that dragon. Like I said, they have been on top of the dragon game. 
I I don't remember any team getting one from them yet. All right, Jana definitely shouldn't have gone in on that. Uh, pretty sure they're just going for some vision, but dragon and uh, a kill and a pink war or and a right now. Uh, again, the V. I dropped off a red uh, pink uh, ward at Cosmic Spray and he's going to be showing up there to make sure that he's safe to gank the other lane. Unfortun unfortunately, Rise wrecked Fah as he came in, so that ward really didn't do any good. Bad placement on that. Gee, I don't know why she thought she could come just go through the jungle like that, but that will give them another kill. Uh, Rise staying pretty healthy in mid, dodging that stun. I think Xerath was really banging on that stun to hit. Good jukes, and that will be a kill for Last Chicken once again. Those. Oh! Minions OP though, unfortunately for Rise. Wow, he deserves it. <laughs> That's what you get for BMing. Bad. All right, though, that mid turret did take some pretty heavy damage in the, at the beginning of the game and is now going to fall, giving GG we suck. Oh, wait, what? It didn't... What? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're planning to leave it up. That way, Zareth can stay in lane and rise and keep farming off of him. Well, no, no, no he's okay. There he goes. All right, and the goal differential right now is 21k to 16k. For... Yeah. GG we suck ahead. Uh, looks like Yasuo is teleporting top. That will be a little bit of, um, I don't know. I don't really like going teleport. Oh, that, that was a great binding, yes. But there was no follow-up on it, so. I, honestly, I judge bindings by how much follow-up you can do. Or escapability. I mean, it was a, it was a good long-distance binding, but if you can't follow up on it, there's really no use. It's a, li it's a little bit of poke damage, a little bit of gold, but other than that. All right, they will get rid of that pink ward and... And River, cutting down Blue Side's vision is very essential because Kha'Zix does appreciate that vision that they have on bot lane. All right, running past the turret to escape that rise may have saved him, actually. Is that stun coming up? Oh, yeah, there it is, and that will be a, a kill for Revlo. The, the KS, or... Er, CS difference is 117 to 84 on top lane. Like I said, keeping a good amount of bully on him, keeping him behind. But that could be very, that's a scary lane. Or a scary out of game, out of lane. Yeah. All right. The lane tower is falling. Our GG we suck though. Last chicken going in for that snare. Will they be able to pick this up though? It doesn't look like it unless they can get that stun in from that Renekton. It seems like Vi, this, this game is still behind uh, the other enem uh, the enemy jungler, Kha'Zix, uh, by two levels, and a decent uh, CS drop as well. Uh, it looks like she rushed uh, Boots of Mobility to try to make up for that, but it didn't work out in the end. But that extra mobility might pay off with that ulti. I mean, you did see them uh, clean up. Oh. All right, and another fight in top lane. I'm, they're staying in a lot longer than I feel like they should. I mean, uh, make me eat my own words, I guess, because it's a double kill for one on that one. All right, and mid lane came up. They did not see the Xerath, though. The Xerath, they're kind of playing this weird uh, run around thing. Oh, good stun. He walked straight into that. Will they be able to get him? And yes, nice ulti shot. All right, bot lane, gonna try to get some push down. Not much vision on blue side. I'm a little disappointed, actually. But, you know, setting up now, I guess, yeah, for another dragon at 140, or one minute and 40 seconds. All right, and there is quite a minion push on mid. Looks like they're gonna try to bank on that. Revlo coming in to try to stop that. Looks like he did a great job. Now they're gonna try and uh, go in on that V, or I'm sorry, that vein it looks like. They know she split off, but they don't have the vision actually. All right, well, okay. This game is going, it's really starting to heat up. I mean, that vision on red, they are just warding like crazy. 
and it, it's paying off. Um, they are escaping quite a few things, but that wasn't enough for the Janna. Good stun, keeping, uh, keeping that kind of mix away. Doesn't look like they're going to attempt to siege this one. Or Looks like they're going to go to bot lane and attempt that. They do see that Yasuo in mid, so they're they're definitely gonna try to bank on this one. But there's not enough minions. I, I don't think they're going to try to face tank it. No, the, the other team is coming in. Uh, they're, they're sitting there just keeping it distracted until the dragon comes up in about 15 seconds. I'm pretty sure they're gonna go for the dragon if the, if the enemy team doesn't pursue them into it. <laughs> Quite a bit of chase going down. They do feel like they have this one. Um, but uh, the escapes let them get away. They are really low. They're probably going to bank on killing that support. Will she? Oh. All right. Vi's ulti did. It's showing that it did count. Um, doesn't she get a reset, though, if it doesn't go all the way? No? No? Mid travel, I guess, means that she doesn't get it back. All right. Positioning on that Xerath overall that they thought they could clean up, but no. On the vision that Cosmix though, popping an alt to escape. Uh, very worth. <laughs> uh, definitely was in a bad position, knew they were in a bad position, knew they had to use that ulti. Uh, GG was kind of raggy around that red or that dragon, but with that V jumping into the pit of them, it didn't matter. The lockdown was too strong. So, sometimes when you're behind like this, you just gotta take your small victories. Like whenever they snagged the kill on the Morgana and then went somewhere else, they shouldn't have kept chasing. And you gotta build small victories to get back into the full picture versus trying to get a big playoff. Especially when you're behind. Oh wow, I got that double snare going on. All right. And again, the uh, there's not making much headway at in the in the gold actually. They're at um, GG. We slept actually at 10k up now with the dragons and just the combination of the good team fights. It looks like they're gonna maintain this lead for a while. Again, good vision on red side. Um, oh, that snare, that ulti. They had, they knew they were just on top of that one this time. Like I said, good vision on bot lane by red side. Maybe a few redundancies in the warding, but that's okay. I mean, better more than none. All right. That vein trying to get as much CS as possible. No, they have to. They have to carry this one out as much as long as they can to be able to hyper carry this. But I don't. I'm not sure if I see it. C judging by just the overall like cohesion on Team GG we suck. All right, they have two going on that top lane. Kha'Zix is coming up, but they GG we suck has two on bot lane as well. Revlo popping that all. Ignite went down and Revlo is down. I don't think that Ignite was actually. There's something I don't think it was necessary, but I mean, you know, little gains. If I'd rather do a little more than a little less when you're behind. All right. It looks like that they. Oh, and like I said, Kazuki did come up and did did cement that kill. <laughs> and that, that failed wall jump. Um, every now and then, yes, you will miss a wall jump, but that's okay. It's okay. All right, the junglers are, <laughs> looks like they're doing a little tango. I don't think they know the other one's there until that ward went down. Kazi's in a very bad position. The stun missed, but I don't think it really matters. He is just very caught out right here with the Q to the smack that with that red buff slow. That will be uh, another kill. Bottom lane, heavy pushing. That Yasuo wall will save quite a bit of damage. 
Masvidal very focused on that turret. He had an option to hit Masvidal three, four times, but instead just chose straight for turret. The ulti coming out of Krunk Muffin, that exhaust, the slow, will save Krunk Muffin's life. The <laughs> looks like she's gonna try to come back and help the Rise, but Rise doesn't need it. <laughs> Rise is on top of it. The Janna coming up from behind will get them both. It looks like they're gonna be able to submit both these kills. A missed stun, a missed push. Ooh, that could have been very, very bad. Uh, but they did it, they did. Wow. Not looking too good. That was very, I'd say that was a very unprofessional way of going in on that. Looks like they're cycling in one by one. Uh, there's a 7k gold lead now, actually. Uh, so they did they did pick up 3k. Um, they are slowly, you know, taking those easy, those little victories. Hopefully, they don't stay too long again. All right. No vision on Baron by either team that right now. I'm concerned that I if I was behind, I'd definitely definitely be sweeping the heck out of that and getting plenty of vision down. Because that is one place you might be able to pull off an ult when you're 7k behind or 10k behind. All right, and uh, again, red side really, really good on their warding. Very disappointed in the lack of wards on GG We Suck side. All bad with the sweeping. Making sure their vision game, even if it's not as strong as theirs this game, Trying to cut back on the other team's vision is also just as important. Kha'Zix deep again, but they do have the top lane to help out now. But I do see a pinch coming up. That B is all for ulting, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, they disengaged. They do not know where the Tristana is, and they do not know where the Morgana is. So that was a safe, very safe for them. They seem to be uh, playing it very passive. Tristana, the best to get that. They got two resets just now. They're probably gonna, yeah, they were very well trying to get all of them right here, right here, and now, oh. I don't know if you saw that, but that Janna <laughs> tornado knocked up the Kha'Zix midair. He, he jumped straight into the path. So that, <laughs> that was kind of funny. Looks like they are going to continue sieging. It's only a Janna and a V going in here. And yes, again, the pick off, another reset for that um, Kha'Zix. Three seconds on the Xerath, which I really feel like they need. If he can land his stun on the right target, or just any of the front lines, really. That's, I, feel, I feel like that's a real big part of their team cohesion right here. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're, they might go for Baron here. They might be baiting it, maybe. No, no. No, it looks like they're going to go for Dragon, actually. Yeah, it seems like GG We Suck have been giving up a few kills here and there, but they are maintaining their map like dominance. Like, they, they're they they're up six towers to one. Um, they have complete map, like, field control, not the occasional warding, but they just recently started warding up again. Uh, it's mainly because, like, when, when uh, Stun Muffins got the kill and slowly started pulling back into the game, they should have started worrying more about objectives than team fighting. Then that would have brought them more into the game and gave up a better fight overall. All right, and yeah, I, I you know what, I agree. Uh, they do not have a strong enough team right now. They, again, they were behind quite a bit. They made a 3K lead, and now they fell back behind again. 12K this time, though. That that mid fight right there with the inhibitor and the turret going down really set them far behind because they, they they wanted something. They they're getting thirsty. They're getting real real angsty for those kills. Again, they GGB suck did get that dragon. They. They've been really um, on top of those dragons for a while. But Red Side is very concerned about that Baron, and they should be. Uh, if GG We Sucks grabs this next ba the, the Baron right there, I feel like they could just push it to win at this point. Damn. Again, quite a bit of vision on Red Side. Uh, GG We Sucks Ward's either being knocked out or just, I don't know, just not placing him as often. 
I feel like it really goes back to how many times the Morgana bees. <laughs> Morgana, has, uh, Morgana doesn't seem to be being as much as... Well, it, doesn't, it just doesn't seem to be being much. They don't seem to need to. With only two deaths, hasn't been caught out very often. It's just kind of dominating right now. Jono rushing the Majais right there as well. I, I didn't notice that. I did not notice that either. Jana does have a Jai Soul Stealer. I wonder how many stacks. Oh, is that 14? 14 stacks on that Majai is okay, all right. Is that four or 14? Oh, it's a four stack, sorry about that. Kinda hard to see. All right, um, and red side is clearing out Baron area again. Oh, no, they're going for it. Blue team does see it. Will they be able to come down on it? Oh, 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 oh. All right. Okay. Um, and no, that was definitely. I would not have made that call. Even with the amount of vision they had, they did not have vision of top lane. Um, I don't believe they're at the minions, so they didn't see any of them there, and they just got caught out right there. That was not a good call. When you're behind, you do. It would be really helpful to get that Baron for the gold and the buff, but. There's a way of doing it, and that definitely wasn't it. Alright. GG, we suck. It just it looks like they're gonna tear through the flames right here. T again, taking. It looks like what, they're taking a safe. A safe one. Oh, oh, and this could be really, really scary for GG, we suck. That team fight was scary. Good. Uh, Zonia Hourglass and then War. Double kill uh, uh, Zareth. That was just, this is not going well for them right here. They really, really wanted that in hip down, and with good reason, but if they get aced out right here, they might be able to make some gains. Well, looks like uh, the remaining survivors will continue. Jana wants them stacks. Jana will 1v1 that Renekton. Oh, yeah, yeah, that went. oh and the scared Jana tornado will probably cost her life right here. What do you? What? No, <laughs> no. Sunfire. That was a sunfire kill right there. Yeah. All right. Um, both teams. Kind of getting silly at this point. 14k gold lead on GG We Suck. Two inhibs down. Looks like they're still going to try to contest at Baron. Looks like I said, if you're going to make any kind of play when you're this far behind, I get it will be there because Baron debuffs. Looks like they're going for a mid and hit. They did get that Baron um, with no resistance. Uh, again, the minions were pushing up quite a bit. Uh, they, it looks like their Muppets were going to try to turtle for a little, but with um, very little success. Sonya Hourglass on Sun Muffin with an ulti. They broke out of it, and it, it looks like this will be game, though. I mean, there you go. There is game. With a 61k to 42k, GG We Sucks closing in with 30 to 50. They will go on to finals to face off. Um, do you know the, the teams you're going to face now? Um, the next, uh, I don't know. Okay. All right, hold on.
what scene is it? <laughs> okay, I guess we can do that too. Well, I guess it's not here no more. Oh, well. All right, and a slight intermission as we go into the next game, get set up. Where it will be GG We Suck versus I don't know what that is. That's another team.
Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, this is Al Demerick here casting for the finals of the Edge of the Water. No, not the finals. Oh, it is the finals. Switch scene. For the finals of this Edge of the Water tournament at RealmsCon here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Okay, well, early in here in the, today in the tournament, um, what, how, how, you know, we have seen a lot of extraordinary capabilities coming through from everybody here. What do you expect will be, you know, for the outcome of this specific game? Well, um, I'm looking for Revlo to make some more mad plays because we saw that Scion yesterday, you know. Oh, well, I'm pretty close. I think I can hear myself in the back. But anyways, um, 
Just uh, not expecting to see that AP Scion again, though. But I'm expecting to see some crazy stuff here because I mean, this is the finals. This is this is do or die right now. So I'm hoping maybe for uh, I don't remember if it was a uh, GGB stuff that played it, but uh, somebody played some really phenomenal Rumble game, like just carried the entire game. I'm really hoping to see some see some diehard Rumble action right now. But uh, outside of that, um, just looking for teamwork all around and just wonderful plays, just so something we can enjoy shoutcasting here. What I have noticed um, within the actual tournament while watching and casting by myself, there, there was a lot of vision play coming into place. Like the, the one war that was just about to expire over the wall is Shunpo over 1v5 Pentakill from the Katarina. And uh, also mentioned again the Scion, which I don't expect to see once again because will be target banned. I expect from the fact that he literally just shredded a Katarina in mid lane and there was nothing they could have done. There, there was literally nothing good on Bloodscrank would pull him and then he would just destroy the whole team. So there's, there's literally a whole lot going on here. I expect there will be a lot of more, as I said, vision control along with the dragon and add into effect turrets. GGB suck and CLG have been focusing around along the turret compilation based off their opponent's reactions. So this will be mostly determining the skill the trust, and however they're able to maneuver well enough and make good calls within the rush of the game and the transitions. I don't know if it was me and you that shoutcasted that one game. Uh, there was one game yesterday where it was like literally not a team. I think it was there was not a team fight for like 45. Yeah, that was me and you. Yeah, there were 45 minutes. Like no team fight. I think it was four kills. There was maybe like a pick here and there, and then that uh, Katarina double kill down bot after the uh, failed tower dive but I'm hoping to see more play like that because more play like that's always fun to do I think that Katarina actually did pass 400 CS that game so games like that are always fun to watch where it's always tense and uh, teams are really respecting each other's engage and disengage at the same time so it's not it's not you know, like antsy play but it's also really nice to see where teams are kind of like skirmishing as well but also not really truly fighting and just like tense play. That stuff is really fun to watch, in my opinion. What a lot of people don't understand about League of Legends is it's like chess. It's chess, but mobile. You can't make one turn and you're done. All of your pieces are moving at the exact same time and shooting at each other. It's literally putting everything together in one puzzle piece in one second and trying to figure out what's the best call to make. Do I go for the AD carry? Do I go for the damage deal? Do I back off and play it safe? And that's the hard part. You have to have faith in your shot caller and in your team to put it all together. Now, the last game that we were talking about, that you were talking about with the 400 CS Katarina, that was the 1v5 Penta kill. That was the one that changed the game and caused them to win after the Baron. Now, once again, I go back to the calls. They were in the Baron pit. And the red team was in the Baron pit at the time, and they had Baron so dangerously low, they could have taken it and flashed over the wall and been perfectly fine and got out scot free. All they had to do was regroup and wait for the cooldowns and do it all over again. But. Instead of making that, they made a terrible decision to call, not finishing the Baron and leaving the pit in knowing that there might be vision there, and then Katarina just went in and saw the opportunity and took it, and they also secured Baron. So there's a lot of danger coming into this game, but there's also a lot of, uh, you know, like I said, like as you said before, teamwork and tensities. Yes, we can look at each other right in the eye and wait, see who's going to make the first move. If one person makes the first move and it's the wrong move, it can become the end. So... They, both of these teams are highly skilled, and they know what they're doing. They know their limits, and they're going to use them as much as they can. Uh, definitely, indeed. Um, and as we uh, go into the three-minute delay here, we'll be putting uh, up uh, teams shortly and uh, bands going along as well. <laughs> That's funny that we call that silent band. But uh, definitely, uh, teamwork's going to be a, uh, as we like me and uh, Matt can see the picks and bands right now, teamwork is going to be a huge, 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 huge portion here. We're not talking about low-level play anymore. These are all uh, members who are platinum, diamond, few golds. So we're going to be definitely seeing some high-level play here, along with a lot of playmaking potential as well, uh, just based on pure mechanical knowledge and, mecha and uh, knowledge of the game as well. So this is going to be a very huge chess game right now. But it's going to be a chess game filled with people who have been playing the game since day one. So I'm really looking forward to shoutcasting this. And hopefully the action will definitely demand as it has all tournament game long. 
All right, well, as the loading screen is coming on through, all the picks and bans, the bans will go off automatically this time on pick, which we have decided it would be a mitigating factor against um, the last team, Revlo, who, or I believe it was Revlo, yes, Revlo, who um, picked the Scion. Now, is Santa Jana, or Scion Jana and Rise will be picked, or will be banned from the blue side, and on the purple side, we'll have Tristana, Lucian, and Malkai. Tristan and Lucian were also very good picks. Also, we've been seeing a lot of the Lucian Braum combos coming around with the double passive using double shot and the stun. Now, with the picks on the, on the blue side, we'll have Kami 7 with Rumble, Xian, Xian with Lee Sin, Hella Cloudy with Syndra, and Warlord with Caitlyn and Thresh bot lane with, Skeet, with Sector. Now, last chicken next, we'll go ahead and go for the Kog'Maw. Crunk Muffin will pick a strong pick with the Morgana to counteract with the, 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 the Black Shield onto the hooks and the Flay. Now, we're going to have an interesting pick here. Now, Jinx is highly immobile, and she's really team-based. You have to have a good front line to keep her alive. But the Asphodel will try to keep in the back line, while Revlo will be using, probably going with the AP mid um, or top. I mean, it's really hard to tell. He does have to teleport. He could go up there. And uh, all bad with the Kha'Zix pick. Kha'Zix has been a major factor in here um, in this tournament today, or not today, but yesterday. There was a lot of resets going on. They were using their mobility to kite around and go all crazy. And they would split everybody up. Now, I I would expect to see a lot of possibly a possible invade with the Lee Sin Syndra pick. Now, what I've seen this done, I don't think they would do it in a tournament like this, but if Syndra does start her E and Lee Sin goes with the Q, he Qs the buff and Syndra pulls it over right when it's about low, hits the ground, Lee Sin just smites it, and they just got a free buff, and uh, their jungler is at half health. All they have to do is run around and get the other one. So, yeah, it would put him in a safe position. However, it would put Syndra uh, a little lower in lane. But if she, I imagine she's going to be fighting Kog'Maw, because Kog'Maw does have the range, but a fight while well, Alistair doesn't. But Alistair is pretty tanky. Uh, how, how do you think this is going to go out with the, uh, the matchups? Um, it's a very interesting pick just looking at a uh, pick and ban order mainly because uh, the ADC was picked blind. I'm assuming that they, uh, the ADC was picked uh, very blind because, of course, Lucian was banned and Tristana was banned as well. So they, f um, I believe blue, team, blue side first picked Rumble. I believe that uh, um, CLGCC has a very good pick comp with that Lee Sin Syndra combo. They've got very good pick potential, of course, with the Thresh as well, and Caitlyn following up with the range. But they also well, they bring a team fight potential with Rumble. If Rumble can hit a really good ultimate, it can always turn a fight. But um, uh, GG We Suck also has some very good range right now with uh, Jinx, Rockets, Kog'Maw, uh, W, and Morgana as well. But I feel a little bit of not necessarily bad choices but not a very good amount of synergy because as you said they have a uh, GG we suck has a jinx composition where jinx needs a bit of oh, what's my, uh, a bit of peel because she's not very high mobility she doesn't have any uh, what's the word I'm uh, gap closers that can space them like uh, Caitlyn does with her E so but the only peel that they have right on that team right now is Alistar and Morgana. And I'll also see the Alistar pick as well and it's a little weird because last uh, since last patch when they fixed that bug that you can get the uh, the empowered auto attack in with that Sheen proc and then eventually the Trinity Force proc, it's seen less and less play. I still think it's a really extremely strong pick, but at the Where same time it's not as good as it used to be and uh, he's going to I would say Alistar's might have a very small t uh, small difficulty with Rumble. I believe he can keep up with uh, with Rumble and trade well, but it's just it's going to be a very. I don't think it's going to be the best of lanes for Alistar. Rumble is going to be able to zone him very hard, and other than Alistar just hitting that headbutt pulverized combo, he's not going to be able to do much. And Alistar's going to be pushing that lane in Rumble, so they both have wave pushing potential as well. Rumble with his Q. Alistar with his E, so this is going to be a very, it's going to be a very interesting top lane, something I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on. Well, coming out with the opening build here, other starting the game, Rumble with the classic Doran Shield, but as you're talking about, you feel that Alistar may have a bit of trouble, but he has a lot of sustain with his E, so I believe he'll be perfectly fine. Yes, he will be mana hungry, and he does have the Doran Blade Star, so it looks like he's going to go ahead and be a little bit up in Rumble's face. That's his goal. Minions now we're going to have the classic well. machete starts from both Lee Sin and Kha'Zix, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Now, Kog'Maw, I'm not entirely sure so he's going to go, but Lapierre's is going to start off in the mid lane, as we expected, because Alistair does have the teleport. And um, now, Jinx, I fear for this entirety of the game, 
she's going to start off mostly in a rocket form because she doesn't have a whole lot of peel, so she can't use her minigun to go ahead and go in there. She's going to use it for duel. She's going to save her minigun for a duel if she gets caught away from the fight. But she does have a lot of peel. You have Alistair, who's probably going to be tanky, and then you have, you know, which would be wise. And you have Morgana, who probably should sit next to her and not use her ultimate until they get engaged upon. Now, as you said, they do have a lot of picks. So what Morgana's going to do is focus around Jinx, be her little butt buddy, be a little shield, and just stick together, you know, loving each other. Now, Lee Sin and Kha'Zix are going to go ahead and start off the respective buffs near the bot lane. Now, where they are able to get a fast release in one another. Morgana was starting with the spell thieves. So she may have started the blue, or her W, or her Tormented Soul. Yes, she did. So Kha'Zix did get a heck of a leash. So it makes him a little bit ahead of Lee Sin. So he's going to go ahead and stop with this race. He says, I got time. I'm going to chillax. I'm going to go with it. Now, Alistair and Rumble going it back and forth. Alistair's going to have a rough time early game. He doesn't have wave clear. Oh, Destin is landing on the Thresh, or from the Thresh onto the Jinx, and just going to drop her down to half health. Now, she will be, you know, as I said once again, focused much more off of her rockets, but after a while, she will run off the mana, so I don't, I'll don't. i be interested to see how her build is, but I think she's going to go standard like normal. Now, Alistair will be a little bit bullied, but I'm pretty sure he's got enough uh, health regeneration. His mastery is under room to be all right, and he expected this. Revlo knows what he's doing. He has made a lot of playmakers. This is a different lineup than what we've seen before. Revlo has been in the mid lane for most of this tournament. Now he's top. So this is a whole different move. And that's gonna happen. No, he's not. Okay, I'm gonna lie. I apologize. One game he was mid, but still differently. Um, they, 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 they're confident enough in their abilities to switch each other around and go. Now Kha'Zix and Lee Sin are coming up top lane, but Kha'Zix is caught by Lee Sin. They're gonna go ahead and fight. He's gonna win the duel, and he's gonna go ahead and back off from the rumble. Now Lee Sin's gonna go ahead and safeguard to the rumble. Oh, max range. Death Sin's coming out with a flame. The Dark Binding. Jinx is gonna flash away, and we should be perfectly fine without 100 health. Kogma is gonna go ahead and duke it out with Cinder in the mid lane. Alistair using his heal to keep his minion from, uh, his way from being pushed as much. Lee Sin getting caught out from the Kha'Zix. His ward hop from the safeguard over the wall under the turret. He'll be perfectly fine. Kha'Zix saying that, but jumps on cooldown, shows the Q. I don't want to risk anything. Everything will be all right. Now, I figured this would be a lot of action, but I think the top was going to be an island. I didn't expect it to be so early. I think it's going to be more plays on bot lane. Thresh is landing those hooks really well, and he knows how he's going to be able to do it. Now, despite Stinger with the range, he's being bullied by Kog'Ma, probably because he's, you know, moving around her abilities. Now, um... Later on, towards the mid-game, uh, how do you feel this is going to go ahead and go? Who, who do you think has a favor, uh, CLGCC or GG We Suck? Uh, mid-game, I believe uh, definitely it's the edge is going to be Taylor to CLGCC because Rumble's going to be hitting his power spike mid-game. Once he gets, uh, if I believe he goes for the, the uh, classic Rumble build, uh, the Haunting Guys and uh, Sorcerer issues. Lee Sin's going to be kind of hitting a power spike as well. Like a lot of their power spikes are mid game based. Caitlyn has a pretty consistent early and mid game because of her range uh, over Jinx. But once Jinx hits level 9 and gets those max range rockets, then that's where things are going to turn a little. But definitely, advantage is uh, towards uh, CLGCC right now. We've got a fight right now, though. Kazu coming in for the sneak up, but Kazu getting in with that range. Potentially, and then the. With the uh, red buff uh, kill, that's going to be first blood towards Kha'Zix. Both of those health bars are very extremely low though. Lee Sin swinging mid, with our, looking for a potential gank. Right now Rumble, like like I said, uh, was hitting that uh, power spike right now. Rumble uh, at level 4 kind of hits that turning point right there where you can start kind of bullying Alistar and Alistar. I don't know if Alistar, I believe Alistar is, a, I don't know if he's focusing his heal first or not. Oh, we see some screen over there, so that something's coming up. But, uh, right now, uh, Alistar is indeed a... He's got a point in his uh, headbutt and a point in his heal right now. It's, uh, he's going for that level 5. Uh, I think it's level 5 instead of level 7. But, right now, it's just a farm game going on right now. Syndra, or, I mean, uh, excuse me, Kha'Zix with the first blood. Uh, looking to definitely finish that uh, Spirit of the... Uh, the Spirit of the Liz Elder, Elder Lizard first. But, as I was saying... Mid game is going to be advantage is going to be towards the LGCC, but I believe GG does have the scaling potential with the Alistar, with the Jinx, with the Kogma. So I think their damage is going to go off the charts once about the levels 14 through 16 come through. Right now, I really wish we had a second microphone. This would make life a lot easier right now. But coming out, he is going to go ahead and go ahead. Uh, as you mentioned, Kha'Zix is going to go ahead and get towards the damage because, you know, he can't go take the Alistar being dropped kind of low. But he's naturally tanking himself, so he'll be perfectly fine. He may have to go back and burn his teleport. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a little bit more sustained health regen. Cinder trying to use her range, but Kog'Maw with the ultimate. He's going to go ahead and make it rain. Lee Sin coming around from behind. 
He's gonna go ahead and get a gank, but he's gonna miss his Sonic Wave, but Kog'Maw, he's like, I'm not scared of you, Syndra. I'm gonna keep poking you down with my little ooze and my draw and my artillery. Now, Jinx and Morgana being forced out of lane, not forced out of lane pretty much, but she's gonna be hugging against the turret. Um, Sakai landing those hooks dangerously well, almost bad life status here. He's doing really well. Oh, oh, is he gonna get dropped? No, the artillery just misses, but he does safeguard, just be safe. Syndra dropping hell, heck of a low. Yeah, I almost said a pun there, hella low. But, um,. And she's gonna go ahead and go back. Lisa's gonna go ahead and cover, soak up the XP. Kog'Maw surprised me doing lots of damage right now. He does have this tier and a flash. Oh, Death Side and sliding out on the max hook. And Dark Binding's gonna hit land and she's gonna back off. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to kite off as much as he can. Uh, Plant Chompers go ahead and save her life from the Thresh. She won't be able to keep kiting. That was great Black Shield to go ahead and stop the snare from happening of the play. Or not the knock, but the knockup, not the snare. But uh, I imagine um, Caitlyn would have tried to put a trap right behind her. Headhunter, tr uh, the headhunter skin is actually fairly nice. I like it. I very enjoy it. Now Rumble is not going with a haunted guy standing build. He's going ahead and rushing his Seeker's arm guard. Now Lee Sin goes ahead and spirit stone. Um, Sinker with a chalice and going for manager, trying to get the defensive on Kogma. Kogma is not going to ignore it right now. He's going to go ahead and just go straight damage. He wants to get the Archangel staff to Sarah as fast as possible. I imagine Kaz is going to go ahead and start giving blue buffs here. That's pretty low. Uh, Kogma uh, got a uh, dangerous position. He's going to him flash away to be saved. Lee Sin lands a Sonic Wave, but he's not going to go for it. Sun coming off from the Cinder ultimate come down. Yo, he stopped. It's low. It's passive. The basic kills, he's gonna go ahead and basic attack, finish her off. He's gonna go ahead and chase her down and uh, bring her half health with the passes. Alstar now with the sheen, uh, he's gonna proc. Now with Kogmo down, they're gonna go ahead and head towards Charge Dragon, but it's fairly early. So Kazakh will be able to go just in this landing, but the Black Shield's gonna go ahead and stop it. And the both team, two members coming down. TP is coming down from the top side, but Rumble is Rumble canceled by the Alistar of the Polarized Headbutt combo. Now there's no background, Black uh, Dark Binding landing down, but the shield, he's staying dangerously low. Oh, really low right now. A flash heal coming down. Kazakh's trying to finish him off now. He's on Cinder right now. He's brought down by the Q. Kazakh down, coming low. He healed, but will not save him. Fresh Pentabox coming down. Jinx is trying to, but she's just caught by the dragon. She's not going to be able to get out. Misses her ultimate. Morgana, the dragon's going to go ahead and finish her off. But Morgana's flashing away. Kaylin's going to keep going, but she does not have the headshot. The Q will finish her off. Will the triple kill. Kogmo's back in here, but he won't be able to grab the lantern. Oh, the auto attack does finish her off. Congratulations, Kogmo. Good cleanup on the kill. Makes it evil four, even 4-4, four to four. however, Caitlyn is 3-1 with the 9-minute uh, BF, so Kog'Maw's chasing around on the Thresh. Thresh is brought potentially low, but Kog'Maw does not have his, well, he does have boots, but Thresh is still faster from the utility tree, so they will not be able to catch up, and he does not want to risk anything. He's going to go ahead and go back and get the farm. Jinx, um, Jinx got the pickaxe, trying to keep up with the damage on the Caitlyn, who did rush the attack speed boots. Now, from the earlier nerf of the season, uh, season 3, they went ahead and nerfed her based on the fact that, hey, she's a sniper. Snipers aren't supposed to attack that fast. But um, with this new engagement, I figured there would be uh, lots of drag participation, but not this early. Um, there was a um, bad placement from each side, but they were trying to make do with what they could. They didn't have much. Great cancel from the Alistair. That really saved it and made it even. Otherwise, that would have been a great 1,000 gold lead for... Um, yeah, for, that would have been a 1,000 gold lead for CLG, but it was really good. Rumble did have his ultimate. Now... They're going to regroup and go ahead. Now you're starting to see the vision play coming around. Pink Warriors being placed around the um, GGB Sucks uh, red side. So they're going to focus around. There. Yeah, CLG does not, the CLG CC does not have any wards out at the moment. So, but um, I believe after their engagement, they're focusing more on keeping it up with the damage. Yeah, that was a wonderful teleport cancel. Probably Alistar was doing the team fight stuff and not even being there because if he had if Al if Al sorry, did not cancel that teleport they were all lined up right in front of dragon now honestly i want to say that was a very not the best of calls from a seal gcc going for that baron after getting that pick on uh or, i mean i'm dragging to this uh they got oh they're seeing a little bit of engagement rebel is getting pushed out but that was not the best of calls because after um, they had fought uh, and Syndra had gotten that kill on uh, Kog'Maw and mid lane, they went immediately, they're like, okay, we got a kill on mid lane, Dragon. But a lot of them were at half health because Syndra did get chunked from uh, fighting with Kog'Maw and also a uh, Kog'Maw passive took it down to about, I believe, a 30 HP. So that was not the best of calls and that's why that team fight happened. But with wonderful, uh, with wonderful chasing, oh, we're adding a hook, but uh, there's not going to be much haul up there. Kazakh's trying to go in on the engage, but especially Rumble taking extremely low, and he's going to be taken down by Rumble. Um, something I do want to point out, uh, I don't know if it was in this, with the not a very best of build choices, but normally when the AD Alistar was uh, popular, oh, and he got engaged, so I kick, uh, Kazakh's just taking the simple hop over the wall. But, as I was saying, uh, 
Alistar did not take the classic, uh, crystalline class start. He made a straight forward blade, uh, they're going for, uh, looks like, uh, TLG's going for Dragon once again, but this time health bars are definitely going to be higher, and it's going to be a very easy Dragon for them to take. How's it looking for the snipe? Not going to be able to go in. Landing a beautiful W. Seems with the ulti, landing it through the training. Alistar is going to have a teleport, being able to take out Syndra. Morgana with the snare, and Kajis with the follow up. Team wiping the floor. They're going to be trading four kills for Dragon. Definitely in the advantage of GG, we suck. Rumble's trying to follow up right now to protect that mid lane with a flash. But the poke is going to be too real right there. And Rumble's going to take it down to half health. He might be able to, but he's actually not going to be able to because his ultimate is down. And that is five members of GG We Suck right there that are going to man through that turret and take it down. So that is definitely going to be a very well advantaged trade towards uh, GG We Suck. Kha'Zix landing some wonderful Ws during that fight and chunking a lot of... Uh, hitting Lee and Caitlyn, and then Jinx following up immediately with the ultimate and bringing them down to subpar 100 HP. So those are just easy shots from Jinx and her minigun going. Just to easily take that fight and clean it up. They were, they were grouping a little bit, it was not not one, not like all of them all in one line, but they were, uh, it was mainly uh, Caitlyn and Lee Sin grouping up, and then Syndra and Thresh as well. Rumble getting caught out here a little bit, trying to trade with that get that pingla, laying down his ultimate, being able to get able to walk away safely. And then with the team backing him up. But as I was saying, they are grouping up enough to the point where Jinx walks is going to be able to be uh, Jinx not having any crit, but the damage was key there. And landing those rocks is definitely well placed. So very, very, one of the good positions for GG we trust is not very the best of positioning from CLGCC. Well, I was saying one thing to mention. Um, well, right now, Alistair is right now 2v1 top. They want to go ahead and get this turret because uh, Tommy7 has been pushing really hard on Revlo, trying to get them more map control. Meanwhile, bot turret will be falling towards to uh, GG We Suck, trying to get everybody um, under gold there. 21k to 19, uh, almost 20k. So it's still fairly even right now. But with right now, Lisa and Rumble up top, somebody has to come up there. Otherwise, they might wind up taking up the second turret. But uh, they're going to go ahead and back off, try to do a little pencil move, try to steal some of Kha'Zix's jungle. And uh, he has not taken his blue buff down right now. It is still open, and uh, everything is going pretty much really smoothly. Uh, a lot of kills have been going on lately, back and forth. Now, Alistair did get the Negatron Cloak, but it's a bit too late before Al uh, Tommy7 already has his Hourglass, so he's still to be able to burn right through the magic resistance. No pun intended. Anyways, Thresh is starting with the Relic Shield. He is going to go ahead and try to get it up to a... He does not have his Sightstone already. That is really interesting to see, for he hasn't been able to use his Targons that well. Based off, he's not melee. He doesn't have the execution. Now, Kha'Zix will get this blue buff. <clears throat> be able to go ahead and spam his artillery and farm his Archangel Staff a heck of a lot faster than a lot of people right now. Because uh, he is really mana-based right now. He's really, really heavy. Kate, 3 and 2, going towards an IE as fast as possible. Now, 3, 1 and 3, Jinx. They're both pretty even. Even though Kate is higher in CS, they are still pretty even. The gold difference isn't that much. But it is enough for to get him one item or two difference. And uh, Jinx is going to go ahead and try to keep up. And she wants to uh, go ahead and try to scale out, out scale Caitlyn in late game, but it'll be highly difficult for Alistair going ahead poking around, uh, knocking around the uh, Rumble, kind of break his equipment there, but he's going to do it no good. More sleepers coming out later in the game right now. Before it was all trinkets. Kogma does, however, have the scrying orb. Now, I've been seeing that a lot from GG We Suck, and they're the only team who has it. They're the only team who's been grabbing it this, you know, this tournament, and it's very odd to see it. Um, I never see it ever. Just never. This is the first time I see it most of the time in any games. And um, it, it really helps um, you know, for Kog'Maw to land his artillery and skill shots over the wall. And it does find a little vision debuff. Kog'Maw is about halfway towards Dark Candle Staff already. Uh, Kog'Maw, or not Kog'Maw, Kha'Zix coming up with a nice grab his void spikes and a passive on he's right. Ultimate coming down from the rumble. The flash, the head buff, but the combo does not work with the pulverize. He runs back in from a misclick and Kha'Zix will clean it up with a red buff. I'm not sure if that was a misclick or not, but I think he wanted to flash backwards over the wall, but he just ran upwards towards Alistair. So I don't know what the deal was there. Now, Morgana is going towards the of Large Rod for the damage instead of the Seeker Utility uh, from the protection. Um, so she's going to go ahead and go through it. She does have her, uh, almost towards the Frost Queen's claim at the same time. Now, Caitlyn's going to go ahead and finish her Infinity Edge, so the IE headbutt, uh, uh, Headshot proc will do a lot of damage. 200% 200, uh, 200 damage plus the crit. So it's going to be a lot. More sweepers also coming out towards here. Uh, Syndra going ahead and buying it. Still buying words. Three potions. Finishing her grail. 
She will have more mana regen than Kha'Zix, but Kha'Zix will be guaranteed to be getting most of the blue buffs this game for constant artillery and the ooze shooting out, along with the skill shot Q. And um, his passive, he's, gonna, he's not going to try to... His passive will be used for last resort. Now, I've seen a lot of Kha'Zix try to go, oh, hey, I'm almost dead, going to use my passive. No, he's going to go ahead and Kai as much as he can. Um, a lot of people make that mistake. Now, you can just sidestep his ooze, but if you don't, if he does a just right, you're stuck in the middle of it, and there's not much you can do about it. Now... Um, Thresh still with the target guns, putting a little words. A lot of map control coming around, a lot of rotation from the junglers. They are making the plays. Now the early dragon uh, will be spawning, and uh, those dragon will be spawning here in about 36, 37 seconds. And you can see both teams driven for it. Oh, Death Sands be landing with Dark Biting, ultimately coming down. Kayla will get melted by G double kill. No, Kha'Zix will get it. He's gonna, oh, try to catch the least in, the reset. Brown will cancel the teleport in the bot, and there's gonna be a lost cause. Now, since it's two people bot, now they're debating. They're gonna go ahead and push out the bots here. Are we gonna go ahead and come up top towards the dragon? But they're gonna go ahead and go for the dragon because it's up in 15 seconds. But Cogwell's gonna go ahead and kind of, you know, keep him away and say, hey, no, we're not getting the dragon. We're getting other things here. But there are wards all over the place right now, the blue side for uh, CLGCC. And they're gonna try to keep, you know, they're trying to get a catch back up. But, however, the rotations on GG We Suck are astronomical. They're very powerful right now. They're going ahead and splitting out the team however they want. And they're gonna keep up the focus. They're gonna keep up how they want to do things. Now they're gonna grab this uh, this dragon. So be one for one on dragons. I put them up to 29k gold right now, and um, a lot of um, a lot of builds are coming out here. We can see shaving a lot of defensive forms, but later on, based now of our predictions, GG we suck. Um, we figured they would come up on top, uh, even though uh, CLGCC will have the stronger team fight that we predicted earlier. What are your thoughts now? Uh, definitely right now. Um I want to point out that right now, the probably the main difference right now is in between any lane, and all the lanes are kind of even right now. Caitlyn's got a lot of kills in C uh, CS. Jinx has got a lot of kills in CS. It's it's really evenly based right now. Kog'Maw might have a little advantage based on the amount of assists he's getting, but right now a huge huge difference is between the jungles. Decent is zero and two right now with 52 CS and no kills. Ka is five one and five right now with. 83 CS. He is definitely keeping a huge advantage right now and being that damage source. While Lee Sin seems to be going for more of a tanky role, realizing he's not going to be able to carry this game. But also, um, I want to go back to that team fight earlier. Uh, Caitlyn and Thresh tried to get a play right there by hooking Cog, but I don't think they saw the rest of uh, GG We Suck because Kha'Zix was able to hop over that wall and then Jinx just turning the corner because they thought they had Cog on Cog out. Right now, uh, CLGCC trying to push down mid turret, but they're going to be turning around as well. The ward coverage from CLGCC right now is absolutely phenomenal. Every member of their team has been buying wards. Even even Caitlyn and uh, Syndra have been taking their turns buying wards as well. Four sweepers from CLGCC. Well, the only the only sweeper is Caitlyn with their standard ward. But right now, it's just the the war game is so real right now, and it's costing. This, um, CLGCC needs to get these. Uh, are you having a good war game? But right now, I believe GG We Suck is also having a wonderful war game as well because, unlike uh, unlike CLGCC, GG We Suck is taking advantage of their war. They know it was our, oh, right now we have a T5 bursting out. Thresh landing the hook and pushing it back. We're on landing in hold, but having a flash, Caitlyn going down. And he's going down. We're on a bot down extremely low. Rumble's trying to. Oh, landing though. Rumble landing the ult. Snipe and Cogma having to be able to force the flash over. A lot of catch outs right there from uh, CLGCC. Trying to make an attempt here to turn around, bringing the gold lead back down to 3k. Uh, Rumble, I believe, uh, not and having to use his teleport to spot, um, rotating down. But uh, I believe the. Uh, but then CLGCC are going to be answering with a mid turret as well. A mid turret already low enough earlier. Cog left alone to defend right now. He's trying to get that snipe on Lee Sin, but that's not going to be happening. That is going to be bye bye her. And that's going to be uh, Goldie back to 3k. And along with the spawn coming back. But as I was saying, uh, GG We Suck is definitely taking advantage of their team fight potential. Because uh, Rumble's time is scaling right now. He's going for that. I know Kha'Zix coming in from behind and trying to get that snipe on Caitlyn, but that's not going to work. A lot of flashes being brought out. Kha'Zix is going on this in uh, Rumble, and they're going to be able to find it. Thresh throwing out that hook just a shy too late. 
and the pick going in as well, but Rumble is going to be falling back, uh, teleporting to uh, chase Syndra off that top tower. Or that, excuse me, that bottom tower. But, uh, uh, GG We Suck is being able to take uh, advantage of their team fight position they have right now. Oh, landing a hook on Jinx. Uh, Thresh trying to follow up, but uh, he's going to be taking the long ride well as uh, Kogma is able to finish it off. And if Kogma hadn't hit that, the Jinx rocket definitely would have. Uh, and then uh, still, uh, GG We Suck is going to be answering with a mid turret as well. A lot of trades going on right here. Uh, GG We Suck pushing that gold lead up to about, uh, about 4.5k. But... Uh, as I'm trying to say it, as book plays are going on, uh, GG We Suck is uh, taking advantage of their team fight potential as they have right now. Because um, the mid game is kind of coming out right now and more of a late game potential. Kha'Zix is carrying this game right now. Absolutely and utterly carrying this game. Getting those picks in and getting the damage in as well. And also now Kha'Zix is starting to build tanky. Almost finishing with the, uh, with the Rondon. So this is going to be a very difficult nut for CLG to uh, CLG CC to crack but I noticed a uh, rumble isn't really using his ultimates for team fights he's finding them for picks and he's having to also use them as escapes uh, because he's getting caught out and so rumble ult needs to be here right now or else uh, I believe CLG CC isn't really gonna truly have a uh, have a chance with the uh, with the gold advantage right now that they are down it's just going to be very difficult for uh, CLGCC to come out right now. Well, <clears throat> with the Rumble Ultimates being missing from the team fights, however, um, Thresh is landing amazing death sentences. He's weaving them through the team, picking his targets. He wants what he get. Now, the last one he got on Jinx was really well played, but the call to go in was a little bit too late because Jinx was able to bait it out and flash it out to a team to where Thresh had nowhere to run. He had nowhere to go. He was just going to get instantly melted. Now. When, uh, way back when, when they got caught back down there, um, when CLC, CLGCC was caught back down there, they did the same thing that uh, GG We Suck did. Now, with Dragon spawning here in about 20 seconds, both teams are going to rotate to it. Over the vision battle, they want to be able to not have any surprises with the causes coming out from behind on the picks. With his ultimate and a Q, I believe he's, yeah, Q and Evolve. Uh, he will be able to do massive damage. He's not necessarily caring. He's more like putting out the weaknesses for everybody else to clean up with. Now, Jinx is still 4, 2, and 6 with 124 CS. The IE proc with the rockets, AOE crit damage. It is insane. And on top of that, they, they've, they've been at a goal lead for most of the time. They're sitting on an island. 0, 1, 4 Alistair, building tanky, and doing a lot of damage at once. What the pulverized combo. Now, with the Dragon Spawn, uh, CLGC is going to go ahead and lower it down about half health, but they're going to go ahead and test. Oh, he did not involve And he almost was too late. But it's my buddy. He annihilates these sin. Reset after reset. Double kill. Kogma. Jinx cleaning up with a kill. Uh, a triple kill and it's gonna be ace so zero for five dragon for a team fight but however alistair is still at full health revlo is able to tank a turret if they want to go for the inhibitor turret but they're gonna go ahead and rotate around they may go for an early baron here there's 24 minute baron they're four man able to do a jinx they, they, they don't need to worry about the words everybody's dead so whatever they have to do is Pogma and the jinx are able to do enough damage along with the all the voice fights hitting one target and the uh, they do a lot of damage going for it, so Alistair's trying to sit in front and tank it. And it appears that they're going to get an uncontested Baron because there's no global ultimates coming around on the side. That will put them in a huge, huge lead right now. Not only because of the fact of gold, but more along the lines of we just got a massive power spike. Now, Kogma, interesting sight here. I was not expecting this. He has an Archangel, he has a Seraph's Embrace and a Man Immune. A Man Immune. Now, I don't see this much often because I didn't. I never thought much of the scaling, but he's been getting every boo buff, so he's been able to use both of them as much as he can. Now, along with that, Morgana has now hit with, his, with her Zonia, so she's able to be saved. <clears throat> now she's 1, 2, and 14. She has a lot of assists now. Putting a black shield on Kha'Zix renders him invulnerable to all CC that they have because she's been maxing it, which we've been seeing all tournament long. Now, Rumble is now getting with his haunting guys. Now, Tanky Lee Sin, he has to go Lee Sin. Yes, he will fall off, but he's going to be focused on using his ultimates on picks. Now, that's the big danger here, because whatever he's going to ult uh, Jinx or whoever he wants in the team, but Syndra can knock him back, which is a very, very dangerous position, because if he gets Alistair by accident, well, guess what? Revelo is just going to pulverize the entire team, and there's not much they can do but sit inside Thresh's box, but it's not going to matter, because they have the range. They have the front line. They're able to use what they have. Caitlyn finishing off the shift along with Jinx going with the cheap side build, upgrading her trinket. She does have uh, Jinx does have the pink trinket. She's 6'2 and 9, 126 CS. 
Now she may be below on the farming because a lot of people forget when they're heading kills they don't want to farm anymore because hey I don't need to farm. But she doesn't need to because right now they're focusing more on the Kha'Zix and the team fights. They're still ahead from the gold. Fresh 045 facing the mountain going ahead and go build towards the Kales. Now I'm surprised that Morgana's not getting it either, but I think she feels confident enough that she's able to keep a black shield up long enough in order to keep him from CC. Ward's coming around over the side, trying to get some hooks off, trying to get some defense, and poking Jinx using her zap as much as she can. Her ultimate is a big mitigating factor in the team fight. Now, GG We Suck has a huge AoE position here with the Void Spikes, the Alistair, the Torment, the Soil, the Ultimate. They have a lot of AoE. Now we didn't put this into consideration. We figured it'd be more about the picks, but this isn't about the picks. This is about zoning a team into a cone, putting them into the cone, and then bottling up and throwing them into the lava. So that's how they're doing this. Now, Kog'Maw, with the blue buff that he's had all game long, is spamming artillery, spamming, 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 spamming. Granted, it's close to the base. Now, one thing I have seen in this tournament, a lot of teams do not know how to close out a game that they have a lead on. GG We Suck has utilized this as much as they can. Now. What they could do is do a pincer effect to come down or up top and the bottom. Revelo tank a turret with the bonus health regen, but they want the inhibitor. So they're keeping him there. Now, warning, Revelo may have to teleport down box side because there's a monster wave there. But I think they're gonna go ahead and say, hey, we're gonna go ahead, we have a safe enough lead, we have a bear, let's not let it go to waste. And they want to trying to find a good opening for Revelo to go in, get the headbutt, knock off combo. Here we go with the dark binding. Headbutt coming in, uh, Pulverize coming in, but he won't be able to go. Jinx won't be the zombie. I create flash, ultimate coming from Morgana. But now, a lot of flashes and heals coming out. Exhaust coming out of Caitlyn Mitch, just can't make any plays out of it. Now, Revelo tanking it with the ultimate, but he's going to go ahead and drop through the turret. Maybe, oh no, the level up with the save. Now, he's going to go ahead and uh, they're now with the turret down from the Jinx Gun. They're going to go take the inhibitor. Now, they have a huge opening now. Now, with the inhibitor, now the mid inhibitor down, the super minions, they're going to utilize that in order to move around and take out the turrets. Now with the turret, um, now with this save lead, they're in a very comfortable position. Now, oh, Black Shield almost uh, would have been saving him from the threshold, but it was just a bit short. Now, once again, they are in a very safe position. They're able to sit back on a little cushion, or a huge cushion, actually. They're sitting on a minor, but they just want to be able to put it all together and basically finish the game as fast as possible. And I'm very surprised it's actually worked out. I still thought that um, CLG GG would have had a stronger pick team, but um, it's GG We Suck has actually pulled it together. 10k goal lead. There's really not much more you can say. Um, you, when you when you have when you build a pick comp like CLG CC did, you have to get that advantage. And right now, the kind of the core fundamental of the of that pick composition that they've pulled up is Lee Sin. Lee Sin is zero four and three right now. He's barely got two items. It's 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 spell it's when a core member of of your composition isn't doing it, it kinda hurts everybody. Um and uh, and it doesn't and these dragon calls aren't really the most uh, precise out of uh, CLGCC and GG we suck is taking advantage of uh, and something we actually did not point out when we were talking in uh in champs like is uh our right, start of the game is they do like like you like you said they have a lot of aoe and once uh and once clg cc engages on that dragon all revlo has to do is uh is be a threat is just be a wall and slowly shove them in and then, and then you saw that they shoved them into the dragon pit and and that and uh gg we suck had the easiest time hitting that ace right there Oh, they're looking for a potential pick, and he's in catching on Binding, and Kha'Zix giving him an empowered Q straight into the face. And that is going to be a dragon definitely for GG We Suck. He's in trying to make a play right there, but just not working out. And uh, definitely getting caught out by their uh, by us, uh, GG We Suck's ward coverage. CL, uh, CLG uh, CC does have some potential right now, but it is going to be a very extremely hard road up. We have to play impeccably, and GG We Suck has to make some huge mistakes. Either, either they have to catch out two of their, they have to catch out both of their damage, two of the damage dealers right now, which is either, is either getting a catch on Kha'Zix, Kha'Zix, Jinx, or Kog'Maw, because right now they're a huge threat. Um, Kog'Maw went back um, after all that fighting and pretty much just flat out bought a Rabadon's death cap. He is huge right now, and this is actually, and then uh, checking on uh, Monomune, uh, he's got it already half stacked. Uh, the fact that um, Kog'Maw has stacked a Seraph fully, and 
stacked a and is now proceeding on working on stacking a monomuni and already halfway done in 30 minutes is phenomenal. That is that is a truly a feat to be reckoned with right now. And um Revlo, uh, Revlo definitely stepping up. Um, early game, he was having a lot of trouble. Um, he didn't even have a completed item until about 20 minutes. Uh, okay, and then uh, Rubble dropping that ultimate right there uh, to try to see if they can save the turret, but I don't think that's going to be a uh, very well placed. Uh, Syndra kind of base, uh, clearing the base right now. Jinx launching an ultimate to try to get some catching right there, but uh, Syndra being able to save those Nexus turrets right there from the super minions that are pushing in. Revlo is top right now, trying to get that push. He does have teleport up, so he can join the fight if a uh, team fight breaks out. But right now, uh, uh, GG we sucks rotations and their um, and their team fighting positioning as well is definitely winning them this game. And it's going to continue with them this game. They're just going to brute force the turret right now, trying to zone. These guys are getting pumped by all of the skill shots that uh, that uh, GG we suck is landing. They're doing phenomenal work right now, and they still do have CLTCC still has potential. But like I said earlier, it's going to be a very, very long, hard fight uphill. On top of that, with the Baron respawning and also the mid inhibitor coming through together. Now I'm not sure if you noticed it, but while Weaver was pushing top, they were choking him out. Trying to see if they can find an opening. They knew that they were going to win. The um, It was a battle of attrition. They didn't have uh, anybody. They should have had Rumble stay mid to defend the, the Nexus um, instead of Cinder. Because Cinder has a higher poke. So uh, that was just a bad rotation of the call. But they're going to go ahead and try to get this inhibitor down as fast as they can. Now, Lee Sin missing the Sonic Wave, but getting uh, really hit really hard by the uh, headbutt combo. And Thresh is hot in the middle of the dark biting. will be running on by Cosmos. But uh, Jinx will finish up. Asphodel will finish up with a with a rocket. Now we're taking a kill. Uh, we're taking a single kill and grabbing an inhibitor. They're gonna go ahead and fall back, regroup. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see him grab another Baron to secure it, because along with that, Alistair right now is sitting at um, double uh, twenty percent extra healing on himself. On, uh, that's how they recently nerfed. I don't know if it's the opinion. Plus, um, health regen from Baron. He's able to just sit there and hit turret shots. Not to mention his ultimate seventy five percent damage reduction for what, four or five seconds? He's able to sit there and hit the turret to the face like it's nothing. Now blue side is fearing that they're gonna go ahead and grab for a Baron, so they're gonna run to it as fast as they can, but he's gonna go ahead and drop a quick safety ward and uh, clear clear as much as they can. Togma is not, he's trying to make a move around, make it a little bit difficult on him, you know, say dance, monkey dance. But after that, um, they're just really gonna go ahead and fall back, farm what they can, regroup, heal, and uh, we're gonna see how GTV Slug handles this opening that they have. I mean, all it takes is one inhibitor, da another inhibitor to fall, and they pretty much have the game. Now, this is what's vitally crucial for CLGCC. Uh, they may have um, a good defensive strat, but they won't be able to survive the constant Hail Mary from Pogmaw, Jinx, and uh, Morgana all at one time. They just can't. And Kaz is able to leap in at any moment's notice, along with Alistair able to head but hold right combo. And tank, you know, tank a whole lot. There's not much they can do. Jinx can go ahead and shoot her all from the rocket now. It's gonna win just a little bit. And uh, Unkin pretty much virtually Unkin to the Baron. to be second Baron of the game, giving him 60k. Now, interesting items coming on. Um, mostly tankiness. It's pretty much, pretty much in the bag. It's, I feel this is gonna be the end of the game here really soon. So we're not gonna see one last final fight to the death, and it's just gonna keep going until we go. Now let's just wait and see what happens. I do want to point out right now that there is a monster wave top, but it looks like Revlo is going to be dealing with it, but, um... Uh, uh, stream. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, we might have to. Uh... But right now, uh, a lot of sieging going on. Alistar does have his teleport up, so they can join in right now. Every, almost everything is up right now, except for Thresh is exhausted. But uh, I believe there's a lot of miscommunication right now going on from CLGCC. And uh, if, if, if they can take anything to learn from this game, is oh, that is a monster double uh, Cogna uh, pull right there. This land is chunky, CLGCC. But if there's anything they can learn, uh, to take into the next game is uh, they really need to focus on their communication. Oh, and we got uh, potentially. Uh, 
Notice it's the same strat before. Rebel's on top, everybody else is top. They're doing the same thing. And last chicken, everybody else is gonna go ahead and go engage onto it. And then turret dies. Press Fenn Box flashing over, but no, Cosmic's gonna go ahead and jump around. Crump Muffin's gonna go ahead and finish off the kill. Zoni is to stop the ace and home from being shot, but it won't. The cooldown be five seconds. Jinx Rock is going right by. And the uh, Rebel is going ahead and chase. Oh, right now, Cinder very low with the Tampa 4 combo ultimate. Along with the Sheen Pro or Trinity Force proc, will lock it down. So, but he's gonna take the shirt. Terry's gonna say, hey, yo, um, it's not doing any damage, and I have healing. Caitlyn, right now, 1v4, unable to do anything to stop this. This will go ahead and beat the game. And this is gonna be uh, a good game. We'll make 1-0 for GG. We suck into the finals.